Aloha. Welcome to you from Waikiki Beach. Beautiful day here in Hawaii. Wish you could be here with me. We're going to be having a deep adventure uh, retreat here December 7th through the 11th. So if you want to find out more about that, go to our website, deepadventure.com. And our retreats are always an adventure. We mix uh, fun in the sun in with uh, going deeper with the Lord because recreation is also a way that God uses for recreation. It kind of gets you out of your normal uh, pattern of life and Sometimes God can interrupt you and kind of speak to you in a special way. So come to our Deep Adventure retreat December 7th through the 11th here in Waikiki Beach. Go to deepadventure.com to find it, find out about more. We'll be right back at the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I have a young man uh, joining us t today that I'm really excited to bring to you. Jakob Kelly is his name. Uh, you know, there's a scripture verse that meant so much to me. I believe it's in the book of Sirach. My son, if you aspire to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for an ordeal. For the chosen man is proven in the furnace of much affliction. Another translation says much humiliation. But fall into the hands of God and not into the hands of man. For who has ever trusted in God and been left, forsake, been left forsaken? For as great as his majesty is, so too is his mercy. And there's another scripture verse that says it's good for a, a man to follow the Lord from his, from his youth onward. Um, and I was that man. I was 19 years old. I had a powerful conversion to the Lord. So on fire for the Lord. And uh, though there's been a lot of adversity, and a lot of times when I failed the Lord, the Lord never failed me. And I see so much of myself in this young man, Jakob Kali, as we like to call him, as his friends call him, the Big Yak. <laughs> Aloha, Jakob. Uh, he, his, his, uh, his ministry is called Youth Apologetics, and we're glad to, glad to have you on the show. Aloha. Hello. Uh, great, to, great to be here. I loved interviewing you. Uh, we just had a great interview uh, a couple weeks ago, and that was you know, really enjoyable. So I'm great to be now on your show. You had no idea that you were setting a trap for yourself, right? I did. I know. I was. Uh, I got an email saying, "All right, now you know. Now you pulled me into this, so I'm going to be pulled into uh, <laughs> to, into your show so. <laughs> to interview you." Yeah, I just was really impressed with you. Uh, before we get your backstory, tell me about. Uh, I got to talk to a bunch of young people on this ministry, Youth Apologetics. What it, What is that about? Yeah, so Youth Apologetics began, um, actually I'm not even, you know, the founder, it was started by Ethan Potter, who is an, an Instagram um, and TikTok personality, he's a teenager, he's graduating high school right now, but he started it with uh, a couple of friends of mine, William and a few others, and so they started and, you know, they really focused it just as a group chat for uh, young Catholics, and I, you know, uh, like a few weeks later, I joined along, and um, we started to, you know, have like Bible studies um, along, you know, that were teen led, but then we also started to, um, you know, seek some wisdom from the, our elders and, you know, trying to invite older people who could come in and give us some more insight into the Catholic faith. So we actually um, had on Dr. Peter Kreeft as our first guest, which was oh. amazing, and people people <laughs> loved it. So we were like, all right, you know, this is going to be a series, and, um, you know, it's really just taken off from there. I love Dr. Peter Kreeft, not, not just because he's a surfer. Did you know that? <laughs> I did not know that, no. Yeah, he's written, awesome. and you know he's written over 100 books. He, he writes them while he's standing in line at the supermarket, I guess, is what he, what he told me. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, lo I love him. And, and Bob, by the way, how old are you? I am 16. You're yep, 16 I'm, years old. I am. I'm turning uh, 17. Uh, I, you know, today is May 7th, but I'm going to be turning 17 so, in just a week or two. I thought you were probably a freshman in college or something like that. So <laughs> so here we say anyone confirmation age or older is, is you know, is, is, um, is better watch out because we can have them mm -hmm. on our show. But you're so, so the, and the age of, the, of, the, of the, the people that are part of Youth Apologetics? Yeah, so we have um, youth from, you know, 
13. I think it was our youngest member, Caesar, who's very intelligent, actually. He's, he knows everything about the church fathers, which is great. He loves, um, you know, Ignatius and, and all, you know, Antioch and all, all the church fathers he's great with. So, um, but he's, he's our young, youngest member. We do, you know, have like a limit, though, you know, asking for all of our members to be over the age of 13 because the platform which we use, like Discord and, um, you know, YouTube and stuff like that, you know, have the you the, those um requirements but um and then our older members are up to age of about 23 or 24. that's just so cool you know i used to be a youth group uh, leader back in the day you know and it's such a pivotal time in in young in people's lives is that the, the whole trajectory of their life is established then and it may only be a couple of degrees off from from really god's way or god's will but in 10, 20 years, that couple of degrees can make a huge difference. Trust me, I, I may miss miss my uh, driver when I'm golfing by a couple of degrees, and it ends up in the other fairway. You know, so it doesn't look so bad when it first starts off, but but that, that pivotal, pivotal time in, in your life, and it's young people uh, gathering other young people, but also having that opportunity to bring, uh, to bring um, as you said, the elders to come in and communicate with them, to, to hand on the faith. Whenever I speak at a men's conference, uh, I always ask the young people from confirmation age to 30 to stand up and recognize them because that's it. That's that's the next generation that we were, we're all counting on. Can you give us a little bit of your own personal background? But by the way, why do people call you the you used to have the big yak? Or how did that? Who 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 hung that on you? Usually, you get a nickname like that. It's some some not so well-meaning friends. Yeah, so, you know, honestly, um, it really just started as like a, a joke. I'm not even that big. I'm uh, 5'8", so, <laughs> and I'm a runner, so I'm, you know, about as skinny as they get a distance runner. So, um, you know, definitely not, not big in size or anything like, like that. Um, you know, I do have a, a maybe a big mouth. I is, just is, talk it a like, lot. is it like when they call people who are really overweight slim? <laughs> Something yeah, it might like be, you know. Yeah, so, um, but, you know, it, it caught on. And so I, you know, just as a joke, I changed my my Gmail name to Big Yak um, as a joke. But then, you know, right now as a junior in, in high school, I've been reaching out to colleges and, you know, applying to different jobs and stuff like that. And apparently when you uh, change your Gmail name to Big Yak, um, everyone who sees your Gmail is going to be able to see your name. And so um, I received a few emails from college admissions officers, you know, saying, hello there, Big Yak. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I see that your name is, uh, is is not the same as you entered when you were filling out our questionnaire. Um, so that was a kind of a wake up call. Yeah. yeah now we've so embarrassed I, you. We've embarrassed you even more. Hey, so <laughs> Tell, tell us a little, you know, we, 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 we got to take a break here in a few minutes, so we may extend this into the next segment, but uh, w- you, were born, you weren't born in America. Tell us, tell us, this, th- tell us that, that story. Yeah, so I was adopted from Ethiopia, actually, when I was um, age of five, so, um, you know, that was about uh, 11 or 12 well, years ago now. But What was it like? Do you have memories? That, that, what was it like for you, in your, when, you when you were that young? Would you... Yeah, I mean, I I have a few memories, not not uh nothing nothing big. Um, you know, I, I I'm always told that like I had the language, you know, obviously still in like the back of my head, but personally, you know, I I only remember like a few words in the in the native tongue um, where I was you know from, but I mean, you know, I the memories I have are really from the um, the adoption agency which I was located at, but. You know, beyond that, though, I don't really have have much of a memory. My dad goes there actually. He he's an he's a uh, a surgeon, so he goes over to Ethiopia on uh, missions. On no mission trips. kidding. Yes. Well, what was that like when th- that whole that moment when when this started to happen? When there was going to be an adoption? What was what was that like? Um, you know, my so I was the first one adopted. My family has since then, uh, you know, after um, a couple of years, they adopted three three more. So they adopted two two more girls and then another one. So we have uh, four adopted um, kids now. And I mean, we have a big family of nine kids. Um, but it, it's it's been a, it's been a big blessing. I know for my family, um, and I I think my parents, you know, wanted to you know give you know give what they can and so um you know i think it, it was really just 
whatever God willed for for my family, well, for we're my gonna, parents. So. We're going to dig into that a little bit deeper when we come back from this break. But awesome. uh, it's Jacob Kelly. And where can they find you with the youth youth apologetics? Where where can people, young people, yeah, find so, that? Yeah, um, so we have our website. It's youth, you know, www youth dash hyphen so youth hyphen apologetics dot com, and we're on you know uh, Instagram youth apologetics, uh, Twitter y uh, y a apologetics, um, and then you know YouTube. Um, Else. Well, so you know what? Go, you know what? Go, go, go to uh, go to uh, youth apolo- youth apologetics dot com, yep. and uh, and you will uh, you will you will find out all the rest. This is the Bear Wozniak yes. adventure. Our guest is Jakob Kali. Kelly. He's a young man who's involved in in uh, great wor- outreach uh, to young people called Youth Apologetics. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to talk to all the the men out there, uh, these these tough, independent men that are going to do it on their own. Uh, God doesn't make lone rangers. Even Jesus had his twelve, right? And so a lot of you men are out there. You're you're struggling. You 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 want to go deeper with the Lord, but you're kind of trying to do it on your own. You really need other brothers, and uh, that's why we created Bears Man Cave. You can go to deepadventure.com and. Uh, You'll see a big tab that says Join Bears Man Cave. It's a secret Facebook group, but you can't join by going through Facebook. You go to deepadventure.com to find out more. And then you become part of this company of men. Uh, we think of it as the Cave of Adullam, where King David, uh, when he was running from Saul, King Saul, different men who were they called were kind of misfits, um, showed up at the cave. And gradually, God formed, and the other men there formed each other. And they became the mighty men of valor that that fought with David, uh, and so that's what we are. We're a bunch of misfits, knuckle dragging misfits, and we we're all like I say, we're bozos on the same bus. We're, you know, so often men will are, are isolated and lonely, and they won't open up about what's really the adversities in their life or the temptations in their life. But when you join the cave, you realize, hey man, we're they're all just like me. They're all struggling in the same way. No one tries to be someone they're not. And we, 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 we share things on, on that in that secret uh, Bears Man Cave. We, we challenge each other. We, I think, inspire each other. We pray for each other. And every couple of weeks we have a Zoom video chat where all the men get together. And we, um, and we uh, you know, talk story with each other. And then we're going through my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. So Bears Man Cave, please, uh, please go to deepadventure.com. Become a member of the cave. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have as our guest today, Jakob Kelly. I was very impressed with him. He invited me to speak at um, or to participate in a Zoom call with the Youth Apologetics Ministry that he's involved in. And I thought, 
this guy's a, this guy is really devoted to the Lord. He's well spoken, and he has something to say. I think to to our audience, we're especially reaching out to young people uh, in this in this broadcast. So you mama bears out there, get your young your young men and women to to come. Men, uh, have your have your have your younger generation come and listen to what what we have to say today, Jakob. So you were born in Ethiopia, but I just want to know this one thing. Um, it's so funny. I was talking to a Navy pilot about when he had to crash land his plane. And he said, well, I did this and this and this, and then I ditched it into the drink. And I go, no, tell me about what happened. Well, I thought I was going to die, you know. <laughs> so I want to know really in your heart what happened when all of a sudden, how did you find out that you were going to be adopted? Did, did you know who was adopting you? or well, how did you, What was that like when you knew you were coming to America from Ethiopia? You were five years old. Yeah, I was really young. So, you know, the memories I have, uh, the really, you know, I, I get the story a lot where my, I, I don't remember it quite as much as my mom and my dad who were on the flight with me, but I remember they said that, so we were on the flight home and um, the, the plane has, you know, the lights. And so there was a button on the arm, um, on the armrest. And so I was hitting the button because this is the first time I've ever seen a button with, you know, that connects to this you know bulb at the which was above me so i was playing with that light just you know all you know it was, i think it was like an 18 hour flight from ethiopia to um the u.s and i was just you know turning it on and off and on and off the whole way because it was just so intriguing but i mean you know that kind of it was it was uh it was quite an experience because that was the first time that i've ever really um that was the first time i ever really understood what it what potential and what um what it really meant to, you know, have this opportunity to live in, you know, the really one of the most uh, amazing countries in the world, and um, you know, it's been, you know, only uphill from there. But you're, you, when you first met your your adopted parents, what was that like? Do you remember? Um, I do not remember, but you know, I mean, I I have we have pictures, and you know, I we got a smile on my face. My arm was broken at the time, and then I would go on later to break it again. But um, it was, you know, it was fun. That that so so then and then and so these are strong Catholic believers, and how did your faith grow? Yeah, so um, you know, my dad was baptized and he grew up in the faith. My mom was um, she was baptized, but you know, never really, she was actually never confirmed. And when I was, when I got adopted, they, we were going into a, um, to, I think it was a, a, an Episcopal church, a non-denominational parish in the area. But a few months later, um, you know, they decided to return to the church. And so my mom got confirmed. I got baptized um, all in the same day. And, you know, that kind of hmm. sparked the, the journey where, you know, we, we all kind of came back into this, um, into our faith. So. And so, what was that? So, so what is it that intrigued you to go deeper? I mean, you're, you you know your faith. How did you how did you develop that interest to go so deep in your faith? Yeah, I mean, it really um, started because in in high school, uh, I've had a pretty uh, rough go, I guess, in a sense, in my high school experience, where I've been to three different high schools, and the um, and I'm a junior, so in three I high did that schools too. in three years. That's hard. And I've done. I did that exact thing. Three high yeah, schools. So, and, yeah. Yeah, and um, the first one was because I I was very. Um, conservative, you know, very pro-life. I was running the, uh, I was president of the pro-life club there. I was actually the president of my class. Um, I've always been a leader and in my, among my peers, but because I was very outspoken in my own uh, you know, faith and, you know, I, I felt passionate and felt like I could, you know, give um, and felt like I needed to, you know, be able to give something back to the community. Uh, you know, I got a lot of hate because of that, um, especially, you know, attacking my own personal belief because the school was very um, liberal in, you know, in their in their beliefs. So, unfortunately, um, the the school community was not accepting, and so we, you know, I transferred to a. Um, a school down in Virginia, which, you know, was awesome because I, there I met, you know, William and a bunch of other great um, ca Catholics. And during COVID, it was like, okay, you know, I got to start doing something and um, took on Exodus 90, which I'm sure yeah, you, know, dude. you probably have heard of. Yeah, yeah so awesome. I was Proud of you for that. 
yeah with, I was with some, a with some of, of your friends yeah, yeah yeah i was leading yeah. a group of um, about six other men and um with one of my teachers actually and he you know so my teacher and and us we were doing this exodus group and it was it was amazing and you know, that definitely sparked um sparked my was it my a, was it a catholic on. school or a christian school or it was a catholic school yes oh that explains it okay okay mm-hmm. And now you said there's a third high school. Yes, and so now, um, you know, during COVID, you know, I, the school I was going to was down in Virginia, but I was, you know, separated from my family. So we decided to you know, come come back up to New York, but I couldn't go back to the um, to the school which I was previously at. So we were looking at some other different some other options, and we found an online academy called Colby Academy, which is a very traditional. Um, Catholic uh, liberal arts focused school which has you know it's been great actually um, and it's been very stable considering all the instability around the country right yeah now. well I'm so proud of you you know that, that you stood up for your faith it's, it must be so hard because you know your be, kids are just brainwashed in so many of these institutions and when you were I guess a freshman in high school um, yeah. you were so outspoken about your pro-life faith that you were basically ostracized on that campus it's a yeah, so, it's a form was. of martyrdom. It really is. It's, mm-hmm. Well, what, yeah, martyrdom, sure. martyr, martyr means witness. And yeah, you were willing and I mean, to pay the price. It wasn't just uh, the pro life position. Actually, it was um, you know a, a whole host of different other issues because there was um, an, an active um, homosexual issue in the in the school where there you know, there was inappropriate stuff going on in during school hours. You know, in the school. Um, bathrooms so, and stuff like that. Yeah, so you like, you you were right there. You know we you know my generation talks about man, what's going on in high schools? There there there's the same bathrooms are used by the same you know same sexes or or of course you know the the whole gender confusion going on. You're right there in the middle fighting the battle, and I'm so proud of you and and the way you you made a stand. And I'm sure you did it in a way that wasn't. Uh, you weren't on the attack, but you were just standing your ground. We're talking with Jakob Kelly. He's a young man who's involved in the ministry of youth apologetics, youth-apologetics.com. It's, a, it's, a, it's an online, um, um, they have Zoom video calls. How often, once a week, or how often do you have the... Yeah, we have the Zoom video calls with guests uh, once a week, but we have a Zoom every night with you know with ourselves where we pray the rosary and do comp line together and we have really? about you know 20 kids who join that and um so every night we do that and we have you know a whole host of other stuff that is coming out we're recording some a series on the catechism where we're going to go through the entire catechism awesome um, and, and and do that so. we're talking with Jakob Kelly. he's a, actually a high school student uh, i believe it or not you know i do the catechism every morning i uh, at the beach it's called ocean sunrise catechism I just call it the Ocean Catechism now, and we've gone through the whole catechism once, and we're about a third of the way through the second time. We're reading it line for line, but kind of talk, I talk story about it a little bit, make it more, uh, what is that old song, A Spoon Full of Sugar Helps the Medicine Go Down? So I kind of sweeten yes. it a little bit and help people that to, di- to digest it. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. There's a scripture verse that says, Let no man despise your youth. This was Paul writing to young Timothy. Uh, 
you know, I, I remember being a youth group leader, but before that I was a 19 year old uh, who had had a strong conversion experience. And I just had to share the news with, I just couldn't imagine anybody, if you could know who, G, if you could know the creator of the universe, if you could really know him in a personal way, wouldn't you want to? So of course I, I would share the good news. Our guest Jakob Kelly has a group called Youth Apologetics. He's a young man, he's in high school actually. Um, and it's and it's a way for the, for them to, to encourage each other, challenge each other, and, and to grow deeper in their knowledge of the faith and their and their closest to the Lord. But the thing about Jacob that is significant isn't and in, in, in about these members of the of of his this ministry is that you know you don't have to uh, be a, a brilliant theologian to just say I know the man, I know Jesus, he loves you. I know it because I know he loves me. I know it way down in my knower, and he has a perfect plan for your life. I remember when my when I was converted at the age of nineteen, my whole family went through a conversion soon afterwards, and my I remember my father saying, "Someone's telling him you're going to be a witness. You got to be a witness for Jesus." And it was like, "Am I going to see a car wreck, or what do you mean a witness?" You know, you don't have to be a great apologetic person in order to be a witness to say I know Jesus he loves you he made you with a unique plan for your life but it doesn't hurt to understand our faith fide et ratio faith uh, seeking understanding and that's a little bit about what youth apologetics is let's talk a little bit about when I got to join you guys uh, what was the react to tell to set the stage about when I was on your zoom call with you with your with your members what kind of transpired there yeah, so we definitely had a little bit of a, a face slap, I think, you know, when you came on because a, a lot of the times, um, you know, our guests, our members rather, they don't really come on camera. Uh, they're a little bit shy. They like to just, you know, listen in, maybe, you know, leave a little comments in the chat box, but never being told to, you know, come on camera and you know, take that uh Take that moment of you know really strength and courage to be able to turn on your camera so that was definitely um, a moment where we realized that we needed to encourage our members to do that because that I think you know that definitely was lacking and uh, when mr. you know when bear you came on it was it was amazing because um, you know you kind of you're like all right if you're gonna if you're gonna be here you have to turn on your cameras uh, man up you know do this because and um, I think that definitely it was it was a it set the stage a lot differently from our previous guests who you know kind of came on and gave a 30 minute or so lecture and then took some questions um but really having this discussion was was really great and we um i think a, a lot of our members really did enjoy that it's interesting it's, i thought a lot about it you know when we when we went on air it was interesting to me too because there was more women who had the cameras on than men and i said Let, this is let's have a dialogue you know, every speaker likes to see who he's speaking to, but I wanted to have more of a dialogue than give a lecture. You know, and uh, I think so much of of education, uh, men are men are so kinesthetic, or they're so they're 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 meant to be heroic. They're meant to engage, and then and then the classroom says sit uh, sit down, shut up, and regurgitate whatever I tell you two weeks later on the test, and so they're not used to that that the dialogue the dialogic way. You know. Um, of, of 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 learning, and so I began to challenge them. And the women turned on their 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 um, videos, so we could see a little. And a couple of the guys did, but I finally just said, "If you're that passive a male that you can't turn on your your video, then you should leave." You know, and it really, it, I think it really put 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 some gumption in the men to realize so many what, what is your thought it seems like so many there's an attack against manliness we don't use the word masculine because everyone you know the whole thing about women can be masculine too and all of that we just call it manliness um what do you and when my when we begin to speak there i asked the women who were like seemed like college age some of them and they wanted the men to be manly also. They said, we've almost given up on men. They don't ask us out on dates, or if they do, they don't. We may date them, but they don't ask us to marry them. They're not, they're not men. And I have so many young people, uh, Jakob, when my wife and I are out speaking, I'm, when I also young people up to even the ages in their 30s will come, come and say, where are all the men? 
where, where have the men gone? And there's that song that so that that's sung now. Uh, my wife listens to country western. I think it's a western song. Where have all the cowboys gone? I mean, you you you're a bold, strong man. Talk to your generation about that. What do you what do you, what do you see the situation is there right now? Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think it really comes down to how we have been institutionalized because, like you said, with schools. Um, everything has become very feminized. Um, even the church has become very feminized, where you know there is there's nothing which draws men in. Um, personally, I love the Latin Mass because there is such a, a masculine, you know, a mas- you know, manliness presence in the Latin Mass, where you see all these young men in um, as altar servers, as um, priests, and you see this, you know, very manly presence on the altar which really draws you in um but when you you know feminize it when you you know begin to make this into more of an emotional thing it really draws men away and i i I think that you know a lot of uh are a lot of men today feel like they they no longer have an opinion or they no longer can really voice themselves because they're men. Um, I hear, I heard the story of the school. Um, I forget, I think it was in Virginia where all the boys were told to stand up and apologize to the women in the class because they were men. And it was just appalling because you can't expect, you know, boys to just apologize because they are boys. I mean, they've done nothing wrong other than they were, you know, boys. So, um, I think there does need to be a sense of, an, you know, an unapologetic nature in us where we don't apologize for being men. We don't apologize because we, um, you know, have this innate, you know, nature, this uh, where God has made us, you know, into into atoms um, where, you know, and and Christ, you know, God himself was incarnate into a male where we need to take take on a sacrificial nature within ourselves, being able to sacrifice for for each other, for um, for you know for the women, um, but for you know the whole world as well, right? So, be becoming into mini you know mini Christs where we can um, take on the the suffering and the the, the sins um, of of one another in a, in a sense where our um, our contributions will be so minuscule compared to that of Christ, but we can you know do as much as you know as much as we can so we definitely need to be unapologetic <laughs> you boys out there don't apologize for being men Just get together and form these communities you know make bonds with one another so you can lead and uh, bring each other up and instead of you know forming into uh, effeminate men who don't really have any purpose and I have to feel like they have to apologize. You know, one of the things, too, is uh, youth being involved in that the- theology on tap or being involved in the youth apologetics and things like that, or Exodus 90, I think, is a great way. Because one of the things you mentioned when you were involved in Exodus 90 was a group of young men and one of the teachers at the, at the Catholic school. Um, you also need to be mentored. You need to mentor each other, encourage each other. But you need to, you know, in Hawaii, it's very interesting, Yaka, because in Hawaii, there still is the uncles. Like when I walk down, the, the, it's not unusual for a young man to come up to me and say, Uncle Bear, I got a girl in trouble. Or Uncle Bear, I need a place to, where, where can I find a place to live? Or Uncle Bear, uh, what about my, you know, they, they, if you're 10 years older than someone else, they call you uncle. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not, they call you cuz or brada, right? And so yeah. my wife says, it's just a, it, it just really stands out to her because she's not from Hawaii. She said, in Hawaii, there's still men are still men, and there's a company of men. And I think what brings us together is we're not gathering at a bar; we're gathering out. We're out, out surfing or out regular canoe paddling or sailing or spearfishing, or we're on the beach afterwards or before. It's the waterman community kind of that brings that out, brings the men together. And there's something about that that the, the uh, paddling out together. And it's like when 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 Jesus said, you know, row out into the deep you know, and cast out your net. So young men, you need to be in the company of older men too. Uh, I suggest if you're a young man, why not become part of That Man Is You, one of the That Man Is You programs. You can go to tmiy.org 
and find out more about that. But you need to mentor each other, but you need other. You need to acknowledge there's a patriarchy that has been uh, that you've been separated from, and you need to honor your 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 father. You need to also honor these uncles and they may not be it may not be a real uncle it may be a deacon in the church or something but but young men need to be in the company of older men and we need the fire of the younger men too to remind us of to be courageous and 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 why we're doing what we're doing this is the bear wasnick adventure we're talking to Jakob kelly a young actually high school student who's a part of the youth apologetics movement and you can find out more about him at youth-apologetics.com we'll be right back with more of the bear wasnick adventure Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wasnick. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wasnick Adventure. Hey, we want to invite you to go to deepadventure.com and you can, uh, young men, we've been talking to young men because we have Jakob Kelly with us today. He's a young, young man. You can join Bear's Man Cave. You can go to deepadventure.com and become part of Bear's Man Cave where there's other men that, that can mentor you, that can challenge you, that can encourage you through the secret Facebook group or through our Zoom video chats. Um, what I like about what Jakob is doing with youth apologetics is, is it's young people, but they're also bringing their elders in to dialogue with them. And I would encourage you, Jakob, with this group to more and more enter into dialogue with them. If you, if you, with Dr. Peter Kreft, he probably would have preferred to have the whole thing be a Q&A, right? I know yeah. that's his favorite thing. Be, yep. Begin to develop that more into a dialogue. Yeah, share for 15 minutes and we want 30 minutes of discussion. And maybe your speaker may not have that gift of drawing people out, but you do. And, um, and, and begin to have that, begin to have you know, a, a dialogue. Do you guys ever get together uh, for an outing or something of some sort, the youth apologetics? I know they're all over yeah. the country, but... Yeah, we are definitely, you know, all over the country and all over the world, actually. We have a lot of members um, who are in... We have, you know, multiple in Australia, a few in South America. Aussies. Even in, you, uh, you let yeah. Aussies join? <laughs> I know. It was, uh, it was risky. They but, could be uh, a member, but don't ever date my sister. No, we love Oz. <laughs> I love Aussies. I've competed a lot against them and surfed a lot in Australia, and I love Aussies. Just love they're the closest thing to cousins we have as Americans, you know, I think. But So yeah. you have peop people all over, but do you ever find yourselves get, being able to get together? Yeah, so we definitely, um, I, I mean, obviously – because we have these uh, group chats and stuff on like Discord and and other social medias, we um, you know people who do get become close friends do connect um, in person. I've met you know multiple people actually who are in the in the chat, and I know that people who people who are you know planning on getting together. Um, that is mostly the older people because you know they are able to they actually you know, drive. And, and, yeah, exactly. They can they can um, rent a car. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So our younger members they kind to have to deal with you know just being able to maybe commute um maybe like an hour or something and meet with somebody but obviously uh you know trying to make sure that everyone is staying safe so we do um you know make sure that we we do uh verify everybody and go through like a right. big background check to make sure and you know check their so social important. medias and all that so stuff important. yeah tell me about your dad yeah my dad i, mean, you, uh, I think it's he, really interesting i want to know about that he's he's obviously had a great impact in your life. Tell me about your dad. Yeah, so he's um, he's a he's a doctor and an ear, nose, and throat surgeon, and he um, he started a a group called Hearing Loss Prevention in Ethiopia. Um, 
just after you know, I was adopted, and it's it's like a Doctors Without Borders kind of thing where he saw this need in Ethiopia because in the whole um, in the whole country there was only one ear, nose, and throat specialist for mm. the whole country, and there was a you know deep need for these people because there were so many who had like eye problems that could be easily fixed you know just with the basic utilities or with basic training uh, a lot of people who you know are, were starting to get deaf or had throat problems which you know obviously aren't serious issues but with a little bit of um teaching and instruction for the doctors who were there it was definitely um, fixable. So he started a, you know, this group and he goes to Ethiopia. He went rather once a year. He hasn't gone just because of COVID and stuff, but he went there once a year and he brought medical supplies. He brought uh, a few of his partners and they would go there for uh, a few weeks instructing the, you know, the, the doctors who were there and teaching them how to do these basic processes, but also bringing them a bunch of, you know, medical supplies as well. But what, what is, what is he brought into your Catholic faith? Yeah. So, um, I think he's definitely given me the, a, uh, you know, this example of what it really means to give, um, what you, what you have, right? So mm. as men, we, we have a lot within us, but it, we can't keep that all to ourselves. We can't be selfish. Um, Christ was not selfish. And, you know, there is no, there cannot be this selfishness within us where we just keep all of our talents to ourselves and don't give back um, what we have. So, you know, my dad, obviously he has this uh, great um, talent where he's able to provide these resources for everyone else mm. um, and, you know, and for this whole country. So, he, so you see him doing the stuff that's what i call it exactly not just, yeah and not just believing but doing doing the stuff yep. um what would you say what do you want to say to your the young young audience that might that hopefully our mama bears and the men are are bringing this 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 youtube version of the show to um what would you say to them yeah, I mean, I would just encourage you, um, you know, if you're interested, uh, I want you to, to join maybe, um, you know, obviously you can reach out to us, or you can email us, um, our email is on our website, uh, youth, youth-apologetics.com, but, you know, if you're not able to, I definitely encourage you to continue pursuing and um, learning about your faith, because it is really just amazing what the, you know, what, if, what um, mysteries are in the faith and so many people don't understand how I mean, uh, amazing the catholic faith is what you, the, the catechism you love God, yes, tell, the catechism the, the bible that. also we yeah. we have a bible program where each day we we read um three books of the uh or rather we read an Old Testament story and a wisdom story and a New Testament story each day on Discord together. So we love the Bible and we love the catechism. These are two, um, you know, really core scriptures and reading uh, materials for our faith to, to learn about the faith and to be instructed in the gospel. So um, I encourage you guys all to read at least, you know, 20 minutes a, a day when you read the, the scriptures for 30 minutes a day, you get a, a, um, a plenary indulgence. So, you know, you know what I tell not? people is it's, it's really hard to pray for 10 minutes a day. It's really hard. Well, let me say it like this. It's really hard. People say, well, just start out easy. Just pray for 10 minutes a day. It's really hard. It's actually easier to pray for 20 minutes. And then when you pray for 20 minutes or you study the Bible for the catechism or the Bible for 20 minutes, then you want to do it for 30 it's actually easier to spend an hour with the Lord than it is 10 minutes. Because once you get, once you move on past that 10 minutes, you get hooked, you know. Do, yes. do, is, your, is your ministry uh, 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 under the auspices of, a, do you have a spiritual uh, director or a, a local parish? I know because you're, you're worldwide, it's, you know. 
Yeah, um, we don't have any, you know, like really firm one. Uh, obviously, we have met multiple people who are close to their local priest, um, and we've told them about this, and we are, you know, we keep in touch with them and we always ask for their prayers, and they always ask us about, you know, how it's going and are always giving us advice and stuff like that. But, um, you know, as a as an entity itself, we, we do not have any, you know, firm, um, you know, spiritual advisor. Yeah, it, because you're a work in progress too, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yep, we we're barely a year old right now, so uh, we're still growing, and we we um we see a lot of potential still. Well, I'm so proud of of you and the people that you're you're working with, and it's so vital that it comes from your generation. It, you know, is you know challenging and encouraging and speaking to other members of your generation. W- you know, uh, when I, I'm with Father Mitch Pacwa, he'll ask me about what do you, what, what, what does, is the Lord saying to younger men about dating? And I know you're, you're, you're real young, you're still in high school, but um, it, it, the women, when we were talking on, on the, um, on your, your, your apologetics Zoom chat, they were like upset with the men because the men were not proactive in, in, in seeking relationships. They just weren't manly. What do you say to your generation of men about that? Yeah, when you're and, young, uh, you're maybe just starting to date. I don't even know if you are, but but what what do you see up ahead of you? Yeah, definitely. I, I agree where there is a, uh, there's this sort of hesitancy in men or, you know, in our generation where we don't want to um, ask people out because we're scared of a possible rejection or you know scared of you know what people might think if we do get rejected and stuff like that where we're only going to going to ask out if we are 100 percent certain that you know we will receive the answer which we want um but that's not how it goes you know you do have to be willing to take risks as men you have to be willing to um maybe fail and face plant a couple times mm-hmm. but get up and you know just kind of brush it off and uh you know do better the next time I, I, I think men of all generations have faced that it's just that the it's just that they did it they faced it and they did it yeah and and, and, exactly. and and it's too easy to uh you know have an online relationship or visit with someone online or something like that but we need we need you young men to man up and begin to um, cherish uh, the young women around you, and get to know them, and be a servant to them, and and and, and care about them. And and when you do date someone, and you and you do feel it's a something good, then ask him to marry marry you. You know, you seek the counsel of your parents. But I mean, we need our men to be bold again. We're talking with Jacob Kelly, Youth Apologetics, Youth Dash Apologetics. Dot com, uh, young people from all over the world are part of this, and uh, we encourage you to go and find out more, uh, and get to know uh, Jakob. And uh, this is the Berwazic Adventure. If you want to know more about us, you can go to deepadventure.com and do that. We got to we got to run. We're, we're we're pow already, as we say in Hawaii. Pow means finish, and uh, we're pow. And I know my son Jeremiah wants to go golfing with me. I'm becoming uh awesome. yeah. We have a, a lot of fun out golfing. We don't even cuss when we, when we golf, dude. <laughs> That's how amazing it is. Uh, you know, it's so funny because you're you be golfing and from a fairway over, you hear a four-letter word, you know, and they always say the reason why they call it golf is because all the other four-letter words were taken. But we, <laughs> we, we have a lot of fellow, we have a lot of a great conversation together, he and I, while we're out, we're out, we're out on the golf course. So I'm, we're heading out to do that. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.